Hello again, my name is Mr. Anger, uh, principal and teacher here in an ACE school, and I happen to know that physical science 1112 uh, has given a lot of students difficulty, and this is one of the paces that I just anticipate I'm going to need to sit down with a student and explain some of the concepts. So because I've done the same explanations over and over and over again for several years, um, I've kind of refined how I present it and simplified it and I'm kind of gearing this really to students who are working in this curriculum. Um, I, I may irritate some, some math, I mean a science teacher who uh, really knows a lot about energy levels and likes to uh, be very um, consistent in using the shapes, you know, the dumbbell shapes for S and things like that. I, I've kind of come up with my own Mr. Anger model, so you'll have to excuse me. It helps me understand it and it's helped me explain it to students a little better. And uh, so I'm going to try to give you a few tips in this little lesson that will help you, particularly with pages in your pace, one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll see how far we can get. And uh, there's a lot in this pace, okay? We're going to meet a couple more times before this pace is over. But let's talk here at the very beginning <clears throat> about energy levels and sublevels, orbitals, electrons. These are all terms that you're going to read in this pace and that we need to, uh, to understand what they are, all right? First off, do you like playing games? Do you like looking for patterns in things? Let's look at a pattern here, and we'll unlock the pattern first, and then we'll go back and explain it a little bit. Energy levels can have sublevels. The sublevels are named S, P, D, and F in that order, okay? And I, I should try to come up with, but I haven't yet, some kind of uh, a little uh, mnemonic device or gimmick to memorize the order, but we just have to kind of memorize. S comes first, and then P... D is third, and then the fourth is F. Within each sublevel, there can be orbitals. Now, each orbital, I picture like a, uh, like a racetrack where you have one electron going this way and one electron going this way, and they're racing around in opposite directions but on this band, all right? So I have pictured um, on this uh, ping pong ball, I'm going to picture this as energy level one, and I have one orbital running around here, and uh, that's the sublevel S, and there's only one orbital, so there's two electrons possible, one going this way, one going this way, and they keep passing each other as they go around, okay? So I'm picturing it that way, two electrons per orbital. Now look at the pattern. We have odd numbers, okay? Is that odd? Yes, it's odd. 1, 3, 5, and 7. And that corresponds to the S, P, D, and F. Now, all you got to know, if you just memorize that little bit, every one of these has two electrons. So each orbital has two. So if you have three orbitals, you can have a maximum of six electrons in the P sublevel. All right? There are five possible orbitals on the D sublevel, and so there's a maximum of 10 electrons possible when we get to D. And then F is the next odd number, 7. 7 times 2, 14. Yep, that's how many we can have there. Now, energy level 1 only has the S sublevel, okay? That's the smallest. Right, we'll let that be represented by this. Now, there are really only two elements. <clears throat> Let me grab my uh, periodic table here and hold this up and show you. Hydrogen here has one proton and one electron, and it is energy level one, okay? The rows represent or correspond to how many energy levels are in that atom. So hydrogen has one energy level and has one electron. Then we come over here to helium. Helium has two as the number of protons. That's also the same as the number of electrons. Remember, protons are positive. Electrons are 
negative, and then we also have neutrons that are, positive, that are neutral, all right? But the electrons and the protons are always the same because it's going to be electrically neutral, electrically balanced. So if I have two protons, I have two electrons, and guess what? That maxes out the S sublevel of energy level one. That's all, two electrons, that's the max. Now we can have just one. If I have just one, I have hydrogen. If I have two electrons, that means I also have two protons, I've maxed out energy level one S with two electrons. So then what happens is we have to add another another energy level and I try to picture this and again this is this is Mr. Anger's model not what you're going to see in your pace but picture this energy level and then open this up and put this inside all right so you have one energy level and another one coming around outside of it so energy level one energy level two wraps around it and we have here the red line is going to represent the S sublevel so how many orbitals? Only one in S, so I can have two electrons here. And then I've got one, two, three, all right, and that represents the P um, sublevels. And I can have three, one, two, three orbitals for a maximum of six electrons, okay? So picture this is energy level one. This is energy level two over top of it. I'm going to take an element here, oh, let's jump all the way out here. Your pace has a good picture, by the way, um, showing electrons being added, bottom of page six. This is a good diagram showing um, energy level two and the electrons, the first two are already in there from energy level one, and then lithium adds one electron in energy level two, S1 and then it moves to beryllium. As soon as we add one more proton, the proton is what changes the identity of the element. Add one proton, and now it's no longer lithium, it's beryllium. But when you add one proton, you also add one electron. So now I have, count them up, one, two, three, four electrons. If I add one more, now I'm at boron, I have five electrons total. Two of them are in 2s2, okay, so if I'm going to use this little model here to picture that, pretend like uh, the first two electrons went into the red track, and then when I added one more electron, it went into one of these black tracks, okay? And then you move across to carbon, and we add another electron in 2p2, and then we add another electron when we move to nitrogen, we go to oxygen, fluorine, when we get to neon, we have maxed out the number of electrons that can be put in the second energy level. If you count them up, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons in energy level two. See the 2s2 and 2p6. And we have two electrons underneath that in the other energy level. Energy level one had two electrons, and now we've maxed this out with eight. Add up eight plus two, guess what you get? You get 10. And that's what element neon is, is 10 protons and 10 electrons. Now let's talk about this for a minute. Let's take nitrogen for instance, okay? I put both nitrogen and sodium up here because their atomic symbols are very similar, all right? So we can kind of get used to seeing them but realizing that they're different. Nitrogen is just N. Sodium is Na, all right? So let's look at this again. Nitrogen, the atomic number is seven. Seven is the number of protons. Whenever you see the atomic number, and it's not, it's not the number with decimals, that's the atomic mass. It's just the whole numbers and they go in order across the chart. So the atomic number is the identity of the element because that is the number of protons. The number of electrons will be the same in order to be electrically balanced. So let's count up the number of electrons that I have here. Energy level one has two, 
And so we use this symbol right here, energy level one. We have sublevel S, that's the only one available. And we have two electrons. When we add another energy level around that, we have energy level two. We first, first put two electrons in S2, and then I have three more in P, so I can keep adding one electron until we get all the way up to P6. Energy level two can have sublevel S, and it can have sublevel P. The maximum number of electrons here then is two. The maximum here is six plus two, which is eight electrons, maximum, all right? Now let's compare that to sodium. Sodium, I've come all the way across energy level two. I've added, here's seven, I've added one more for oxygen, fluorine, neon, and that's what you have there on your pace, page uh, six, I think that was. And then if we go down to the next energy level, energy level three, we add one more electron to have a total of 11 electrons, okay? And that 11th electron means I have to add a third energy level. I want you to see something really cool here. You're gonna see this later in the pace. I'm gonna just introduce it right now, okay? Notice that because sodium is in energy level three, we have to have a third ring, okay? A third energy level corresponds to what row it is on the chart. So if I came all the way down here, that means that I actually have one, two, three, four, five energy levels. The column tells me how many electrons it has in that outer shell. So sodium is here in, energy, in uh, column one, right under you know, hydrogen and lithium. So it has one, sure enough, one electron in its outer shell. Now there's something very important about electrons in the outer shell. They're called valence electrons. And the valence electrons are the only ones that get involved in chemical reactions. You're gonna be reading about bonding, ionic bonds, covalent bonds. It's only the electrons in that outer shell that are able to combine. Now, I wanna point out one other thing here real quick, and that is that sodium has 11 protons, 11 electrons, and then we notice that on the periodic table, it tells us that the um, atomic mass is 23. The mass is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Well, I already know that the number of protons is 11. So if I subtract 11, I'll get 12. And that is the number of neutrons. Atoms can have different numbers of neutrons and still be the same element. So we could have an element that is, let's say, sodium and uh, we'll call it 23, because that's the mass number. We could also have a sodium 24. We could have a sodium 22, okay? They could exist in, in nature. They would all have exactly 11 protons because they're sodium. To be sodium, they have to have the same number of protons. They would have the same number of electrons, all right? Because it's gonna be electrically balanced. So the only thing that's changing in each case is the number of neutrons. So there is a name for atoms that have a different number of neutrons, but the same number of electrons and protons. These are called isotopes. And I'll just introduce that. You'll get to that in a future lesson here in your pace. The top of page six, again, shows the parts inside the atom. And then on page seven shows how the valence electrons on the outer shell of the atoms are what bonds together. Now let's just finish this chart right here and talk about the fact that energy level three has S, P, and then it adds the D sublevel. And we can have 10 electrons in D added to P and S. We could have a total of 18 electrons, all right? 
Energy level four can have S, P, D, and F, and then energy level five and six can all be adding electrons in that way. Now there's a certain order in which electrons get added. I'm just going to introduce this. This is covered at the end of your pace, but there is a very nice chart on page 26. And uh, I think this is a helpful chart. Um, as you're filling in electrons, you can put one electron in 1s2 and then 2s2 fills and then 2p6 begins to fill and then it goes back and puts electrons in 3s2 and then you start filling 3p and then you start filling 4s after 4s gets two electrons in it then it begins filling the sublevel 3d so notice the order that all of these go and this chart will help you as you're doing some homework assignments in there and you can even use it when you're doing your checkups and your tests and then as you get further it's going to talk about look at that electron configuration for bismuth that's a long one and it all comes from this chart right here. Now, I know you don't understand that totally right now, but just kind of think that through, and as you're reading through your pace, um, really dig in and try to understand that. Then, uh, let's see, was there something else I wanted to point out here? I think that's the main thing for this lesson. Um, I'm gonna stop right now, and then do a short lesson about um, ions and ionic bonding.